1945, a young architect from England accidentally came to India on board a warship that he had served on. The ship happened to get stuck in Mumbai for three months. The architect, who always wanted to learn to explore new things, thought to utilize his time to see the city and study its architecture. During this time, he happened to meet one man who changed his life forever, Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhiji, looking at his handmade shoes, asked him if he could use his ingenuity, his skills and his approach to build low-cost houses for the poor. The architect went to England but came back within few months. But this time, it was association of a lifetime. In this special program, we introduce to you a man whose work has earned him respect and admiration all across the globe. Mr. Laurie Baker. Architecture the art and science of designing buildings and structures. Through architecture, one can get an understanding of society, culture and geography. For the architects, it is a medium of expression, a means of creating something out of nothing. Hollow spaces is all they have, and how they fill it and connect them is an art as much as it is a science. For some, architecture is a profession and for others, a passion. When it is a passion driven by the urge to serve society, it becomes a revolution. Laurie Baker was just one such architect. Passionate about his work, he triggered a revolution in the field of architecture. He wanted to live and only can ordinary person do what he can for others. And his special qualification or his ability was in building. So naturally he devoted his time for buildings and to give a, a dwelling house for everybody in, the, in India. That was his thing. Everybody must have somewhere to live because a lot of people lived without any all these slums and a lot of people lived on the railway stations. So his uh, motive or his desire was to see that every person has a roof over his head. Baker was the poor man's architect. He had this overarching desire to serve the poor that prompted him to build what even the poorest of the poor could afford. But the quality of work remained rich. He used material to the best of his potential and he used the technology which is already available but he perfected and rather improved upon it, you know. So these are the two, one of the finest qualities in the architecture which made possible probably a house or a shelter or a building more affordable as compared to the buildings done by other architects. Baker's design was simple yet attractive. He aimed at energy and environment conservation. For this, he used the locally available construction material. He also emphasized using material that consumed less of energy, like lime, boulders and seashells. He used cement and steel sparingly. Commercial architects seldom give a thought to such things. It takes a baker to be so innovative. Mr. Laurie Baker's life is an eventful and an inspiring journey. He was born in Birmingham, England 
and went on to study architecture at the Birmingham School of Architecture. Architecture to him was not just a profession, but a passion. Laurie Baker was born on March 2, 1917, into a staunch Christian Methodist family in England. He went to St. Edward's School and then to the Birmingham School of Architecture. He completed his architecture education in 1937. During this time, he came into contact with a group of people who believed in the power of non-violence and equality of people. The world seemed to be going in the opposite direction. The Second World War had just broken out. He enlisted himself for the Friends Ambulance Unit and travelled to China. While on his way back to England, the ship was stuck in Mumbai for three months. But they were perhaps the three most defining months of his life because it is then that he met Mahatma Gandhi. It was the Mahatma who asked him if he could use his skills to design architecture for the poor. He went to England but only to bid goodbye to his country. He came to India as a secretary for the mission to Lapos. And uh, I mean, he came actually to India as the architect for the mission to Lapos. Later, he was uh, made the also had to act as the secretary for the mission to Lapos. And uh, at, uh, his centre was in Faisabad, UP. And there, uh, of course, uh, he was a missionary then. He came in as a missionary as to the Lapos mission. He came across my brother, a Dr. Chandi, who was working in um, a, lep a small leprosy home near Faisabad, about 10 miles or 15 miles away from here. And he met him. And uh, so he was impressed by the work my brother was doing and the way he was living. And, uh, you know, he just had an ordinary house and he, he, I mean, he was a man who was devoted to leprosy work. So when I came to Allahabad station, there, there was uh, Mr. Baker, Lori, waiting for me. <laughs> and somehow or other, you know, these things happen. Seem to have quite a lot in common. And uh, so we spent a month in Faisabad. And I did the operation on my brother and he did the sort of nursing and all that kind of thing. So he helped me with the operation. And uh, so it went on. And it so happened that uh, we decided that probably we are meant for each other. We have to spend the rest of the time together. So that was the beginning. The couple settled in a remote village in the hills of Kumau, called Chandag, and set up a hospital and various schools there. They lived there for 16 years. After that, they went to Elizabeth's home state of Kerala in South India. And God's own country made him its own. Although not without some initial resistance. Mr. Laurie Baker's architecture can be easily distinguished. Unplastered brick finish, brick jallies and filler slab roofs are trademark of his construction. His buildings flow from the surroundings. His emphasis was on building using locally available materials, adopting cost-effective strategies and saving energy. 